What? Hertz cuts it back the other way. What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, what a shit. dumb play! <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would they run that play? Oh, th this is I what I need. I don't understand the play call. This is what Get I need. Get Swift in there. He's killing them. What is that bullshit? Oh my God, this is such a stupid team. Stupid coach. They're stupid. They're stupid. Here we go. I can't stand this coach. I want him fired. Oh, he's going. He's he's getting closer to the edge. Nine. You take DeAndre Swift out of the game and you run two bullshit calls. Mm. Nick Sirianni sucks ass. <laughs> oh wow. It's just ridiculous. Oh wow. Philly 500 melting down. Stupid. Every week, stupidity. I'm so sick of the dumbness. How can you be any dumber? Oh. How can you take DeAndre Swift out? And then you run two plays like that. Oh. I mean, get down. You can't afford to kick field goals. You can't stop them on defense. You have to score touchdowns. You defense stinks. Oh. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this is literally not work. Hope everybody's ready for finally freaking Friday tomorrow. The playoffs. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. No, we're going to talk about playoffs. Wow. Playoffs. Did you see the Jim Mora commercial for, I, I, I can't remember if it was uh, ESP. I, I, it was one of the betting sites. They have brought back Jim Mora talking about playoffs. Yeah, betting. Really? Playoffs? Yes, he's talking about playoffs. He looks really, really old now. He looked like an old, old man. But then again, so do I. Um, one thing that's going to be interesting is the game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins is expected to be around minus four degrees. The NFL made a decision. They're not going to move the game. They're not going to move the game at all, even though it is going to be as cold, that cold. This may be the fourth coldest game on record. Uh, wind chills in the minus 30s. So, you know, of course, they're worried about the fans and the players. And I hate to say it, but we may have some frozen fish out on the field. The Miami Dolphins going to Kansas City playing in that weather – <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, you know, not that you ever get used to playing in temperatures that cold, <clears throat> but you have to look at it and say, Kansas City has a distinct advantage. Tua, who played in Hawaii and played in Miami, going to Kansas City to play in that weather is going to be crazy. Now, I read something this morning. Now, we, we do know that Jared Mayo, um, shout out to Jared Mayo, was hired by New England to be their head coach. Basically, they had a whole succession order put into his contract, um, which you can do this if you notify the NFL that this is going to be my next coach upon Bill Belichick leaving. And I dare say that maybe the Cowboys need to visit that option with Dan Quinn having um, Micah Parsons saying that he might take me with them. Um, that would be a major loss for the Cowboys. Um, it would be great for Dan Quinn, of course, to be able to go ahead and move on, move up, and do more things. But, you know, I'm selfish. I want Dan Quinn to be here with Micah Parsons and see how far they can go with this defense. I will say if the Cowboys do, by some chance, win the Super Bowl, that they would definitely be parting of the ways because he'd look at it and say, I've created Micah Parsons. We got a Super Bowl. It's time for me to fly. Eagles fly. Oh, did I say fly? Eagles fly? Oh, okay. Anyway, Dan Quinn is definitely a hot commodity, but surprisingly, I woke up this morning, and I, let me pull it up on my phone here, that Kellen Moore is actually in line to become a head coach. Now, we heard Kellen Moore did not want to be the interim coach for the Chargers because he was worried about getting a head coaching job. And by Bet USA, I'm sorry, Bet Online, Kellen Moore is the highest odds on favorite right now to be the Panthers head coach at plus 200. Next person is Ben Johnson, Mike McDonald, Bill Belichick, 
and Eric Bieniemy. Wow. Which, let me say this much. Okay, let, let me say this much as far as where we're talking about um, getting rid of Mike McCarthy. You know, so many times we always want something other than what we have. And in times, you know, you, you have guys that, of course, they have a good woman at home and everything else, and they chase somebody that might be a little younger, a little cuter or something like that, and they get with her and they realize how much they screwed up because they had a great thing right there staring in the face. The grass isn't always greener on the other side, which has been my whole thing with Dak Prescott. So many people are sitting there saying that Mark Holmes is not a fan of the Dallas Cowboys. He is just a Dak Prescott lover. Um, nothing can be further than the truth. The reason why I love Dak Prescott being the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys is I think he's the best option that we have. And to go ahead and say, just get rid of that guy, we'll move on and get somebody else, is stupid. I could literally say the commanders would have been better off holding on to Kirk Cousins than the mismatch of all the quarterbacks that they have brought through the organization. Nobody in Washington wanted Kirk Cousins, but take Kirk Cousins' statistics and what he was able to do with Minnesota versus all of the guys that they've had at quarterbacks. And you'll see it's not even close. Kirk Cousins burns all of that. And in the end, it would have saved them money paying Kirk Cousins than everybody else. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll who broadcasts not from his mama's basement, but from his own basement. So with Dan Quinn, with the whole coaching carousel, and I, I'm amazed that phew, Kellen Moore is still a viable option after what happened with the Chargers offense, although I will say Sean McVay and, um, uh, was, coach, was a coach as long, along with uh, Mike McDaniels as well as uh, 49ers coach. They were all coaching in Washington, so maybe there's hope for Kellen Moore uh, there. I'm just glad he's not going to be the Dallas Cowboys one. And this is where I look and say, be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. And firing Mike McCarthy, I'm not sure who you're going to get that you can look and say has done the things that he's done. We'll see what happens in the playoffs here and so on. But I do want to bring up the Dan Quinn situation with – uh, Rich Eisen. I, I, I don't want to speculate, but if Dan Quinn is the guy, because again, Amy Adams Strunk, the controlling owner of the Titans, said that there were conversations to trade Vrabel somewhere, but they didn't want to go through that process because it would have taken so long they might miss out on the guy that they wanted to replace Vrabel with mm -hmm. and so made the move and just let Vrabel go. And then on the heels of that, Pete Carroll meets with Jody Allen, the controlling owner of the Seattle Seahawks, and she comes out and says, after all this time, we decided to move on from Pete. He's going to be having an advisory role. And as you'll hear in a second, it seemed like Pete had trouble when he spoke to the media yesterday, wrapping his arms around that concept still. Yeah. Um, and maybe, just maybe, it's like, okay, Dan Quinn's in play. We better have the opening, even though he's getting ready to try and Tell Jordan Love, not this year, sir. Yeah, you can't talk to him for at least another month. So, well, I mean, a couple of weeks. To the end of February. A couple of weeks. Of February, couple, no, no, no. You can talk to him during playoff runs now. You can do that. And so you've got to set the stage. you got to set the stage. You may not get him until, as you want to say, mm -hmm. middle of February, TJ. <laughs> but I'm just wondering if that's what's at play. Because obviously, if you're Seattle... Quinn's the guy who knows your id and psyche because mm -hmm. he was there when Pete was starting to build it right. with John Schneider. And if Tennessee's interested in Quinn and they want him and the only opening currently in the NFL where you know Quinn's not going is Atlanta. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
That's the only one you can you yes. can make sure the <laughs> only owner guaranteed. who is not calling Jerry Jones to say is Dan Quinn available is Arthur Blank. Guaranteed. Okay. That's the, I mean, nothing in life is every, guaranteed. Everybody right? else. I mean, 99.9%. Yeah. Everybody else is going to be, let's talk to Dan Quinn. Mm-hmm. So you better, uh, I'm wondering if that's what's at play with Dan Quinn. Just leave Dan alone. Right. No, no, dude, just get used to it. It's coming. He's busy. It's coming. Oh, he is. <laughs> For at least Pete Carroll had this to say, because, uh, again, I mean, it's, this is the crazy part of the carousel, is coaches are, there's mutual partings or kicking upstairsing and then press conferencing. This is what Pete said. I'm so grateful to the coaches uh, that have been with us uh, for so many years. Also, all of the coaches that have been here for the years before um, that put up with my stuff and, and – uh, found way you know to bring it to life daily and uh i have great gratitude for that <laughs> really it was really and i go i go to the it's not just the dedication and the loyalty it's the freaking juice <laughs> it's bringing it and mm. i asked a lot of them and uh, they were good at it and i appreciate that a lot to johnny uh, snyder you know way back in the day when uh, i first got the job here um they wanted to know if I wanted to be the general manager. And I said no, but I'd like to hire him. And and Paul said okay. And we we got John on on board. And and uh, from the first moment that we really okay, now we're going to do this. We stepped off to the side, and and I I, I gave John a big hug. And I said we're getting married, dude. And, and uh, I'm going to help you be the the greatest general manager in, in the history of the league if I could. And, the, and uh, you took 14 years to get to it, and I'm so proud. I'm so excited for you to, to have this opportunity. It's going to be cool. And, and it's always been a great marriage, and uh, um, yeah, it's just unforgettable. And I'm just so grateful for that. It's just, I love that guy, man. I love it. It's the freaking juice. The freaking juice. That's a coach right there. He said he competed for the job still. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think he wanted to step away at this time, but got the tap on the shoulder anyway. Yep. Because again, if the Titans are going for Quinn and you want Quinn, you gotta you gotta do it now. And I just love I just lo- love Pete's energy, his always compete mantra. He was all about it. Seriously, Russ, we're gonna draft you, even though we've got you know free agents that we paid money to here. But you can compete for the job. Oh yeah, you can uh, you can you can get the job. Oh, you can get the job and take us to Super Bowls, plural. And apparently Russ went out with the guys in Seattle yesterday to celebrate Pete Carroll. There were some some photos on oh, yeah? on uh, social I saw. Yeah. What a run, man, for him, too. I can't believe they're all out. And I just love Pete's being about it and always being about it. But again, at this point in time, if Dan Quinn's uh, there... And that's the guy you want. You go get him. Mm-hmm. Pete Carroll, Nick Saban, Bill Belichick. One promoted upstairs, one retiring, and one mutually parting ways. All in a span of about 20 hours, 15 yeah, hours. It's kind of crazy. Nuts. I cannot believe it. Cannot believe it. That That's a lot of experience that has gone. Um, from college and NFL. It's just amazing. But that's where you realize how quickly things change uh, in the NFL. You can definitely see that Pete Carroll was not ready and was definitely taken aback uh, by no longer being the head coach. You could see him tearing up. Um, Coaches like Dan Quinn, there's not many of them. With Kellen Moore being a candidate, you know, still being an odds-on favorite after looking and seeing – this guy's been an offensive coordinator, and you see the difference of Mike McCarthy calling plays versus Kellen Moore, and yet teams are still interested. So I'm not sure who you look at and say is going to be better than what you have, but who knows? Uh, it's all up to Jerry. But let's hope that we end up taking care of business and winning some games, and we don't have to worry about this. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Peace out.